This was the scene yesterday afternoon at the corner of Amandala Drive on Ebony Street. A crowd of spectators watched as the bullet-riddled body of Darren Irwin Banks was removed from the drain where he spent his last moments. The 49-year-old was once one of the most notorious street figures in Belize City, but for a number of years, his name had fallen away from the headlines until the father of four was gunned down in broad daylight. His sister Indira says that around 4 o'clock, Banks left home and said he was going to the store. And I have no idea. Like I was just done, just making fried chicken for making him is eating. And I said, Brad's going to eat the fried chicken. Why well, don't make for you? He said, yes, he said, come. He said, don't make the fried chicken. He said, sis, I'm going to buy two water for you. He gone. I said, but the shop the right from the lane here. So he gone. So he said, I'll take one out. So I said, all right then, when you come back there, I'll bring the two water for me then. Never know when I run by Martins, he gone. It was while Banks was returning to his Oleander Street home that a lone gunman pounced and opened fire in his direction. Banks reportedly tried to escape the hail of bullets, but ultimately collapsed and fell in the drain on Ebony Street. I try to run and the run I want, but I lose balance. And I, I want to collapse, but one of my daughter-in-law hold me up and said, Miss Ince, let's go get the strength and let's go and see if there is, is their brother for you. And what was your reaction when you got on the scene and saw that it was your brother Darren? I started to break down again and start to cry. So I said, no, do not tell me. Say, same. I could take it. So I tell her, I, will, I feel like I will pass out. Banks was no stranger to the law. He had escaped several attempts on his life in the past and was accused of several crimes, including murder and attempted murder. He was once the leader of the PIV Bloods in Belize City, but according to his sister, as of lately, Banks was a changed man. Miss Banks, we know that Darren has had a few run-ins with the law. I can imagine he had maybe made a few enemies. Do you think that maybe it was his past that caught up to him? No, nope. because he gave up all of it. He made it bring back fresh memories. He had turned his life around? Yes, he had turned his life around. He had accepted Christ. He go to church and like that. Sometimes he not go because he thought he fears his life. And why like would, so. Why would he fear his life? Did he have problems with anyone? He feared they kill him, but he thought if they kill me, sis, I don't make up my mind already. Can I tell him what we were red vehicle pass the other night? And then I tell him, so he says, sis, I don't make up my mind for go with my mom and my brother. So he felt his death coming? Yes. He sat on and he not fear nobody. He don't make up a life already. Back in 2011, Banks' brother Jasim Gladden was gunned down and died while receiving treatment at the KHMH. His family is now mourning yet another loved one whose life has been claimed by gun violence. But according to his sister this time around, they aren't being left to do so in peace. She says that since her brother's murder, the police have been targeting their family. Just this morning, they beat up my 16-year-old, slap up my 16-year-old in her face, and they stand up. I make the police, make Chester know, make the officer, they back off for we, because we don't have no retaliation. When he for do, and I check ties there, make them stop come, come beat up my 16-year-old in a chest. And make them, coin, make them stop coin, coin, pepper spray me. Banks' family added that they will be leaving vengeance to the Lord and will be hoping that the police are able to bring their brother's killer to justice. Vigil Alvarez, Love News.